from London. I'm joined by a freelance journalist, Lizzie Phelan. Welcome to the programme. Lizzie, uh, you've reported the news several times from Libya. Uh, with regards to that, I mean, we see that the war crimes uh, that were committed by NATO during the Libyan war uh, have been quite ignored, and they seem to be ignored up till today, too. Uh, what is preventing a proper investigation and follow-up process on what really happened in Libya? Well, you know, NATO went into Libya under a mandate to supposedly, well, they said to protect civilians. But obviously, when I was uh, there for quite a long time during uh, the, the eight, nine months NATO bombardment of Libya, every day civilians were being killed by NATO, as your report correctly says. You know, I visited a uh, girls' school that was bombed, the, the university in Tripoli, people's homes. Every single day, civilians were, were dying at the hands of NATO, and there was only one incident uh, in, uh, I believe it was in June, in which uh, I think 15 people in Tripoli were killed uh, by a NATO airstrike that NATO actually admitted responsibility for. The rest of the time, they claimed that uh, civilian targets were legitimate military targets with absolutely no evidence. And during the whole time, the former Libyan Jamahiriya government was calling for independent observers, uh, international observers, to come in and to verify what was happening on, on, on the ground. But those calls were repeated, repeatedly ignored. And so as a result, we do not have any independent figures of the death toll at the hands of NATO. And that is just uh, the, 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 the casualties from, uh, directly from NATO. Of course, on the ground, there, uh, you know, there have been, uh, and this is since the so-called uh, fall of the government, there have uh, been reports that have come out now from uh, Amnesty and other human rights organizations, but we, you know, we didn't need those reports. We could see uh, in, with our own eyes what was happening on our television screen, screens. There have been thousands of people who have been killed at, the, at NATO's proxies on the ground, the so-called uh, rebels or the NTC or what have you, who have been systematically targeting, killing, imprisoning and, torture, or, and torturing uh, the, the many people who supported the former system. And, you know, it's a very uh, prescient day for this information to come out because there are many people uh, in, who today will be commemorating that this is actually the date of the establishment of the Jamahiriya system inside Libya. So, uh, you know, it, it's really a very sad time that uh, after many, many years of, of stability on this day, the, uh, the, the people of Libya aren't celebrating that day, but they are actually commemorating the loss of that system that brought them stability. And the, the result of the loss of that system has been uh, was the death of thousands of people, as your report has, has mentioned, uh, at the hands of NATO and their allies on the ground, the rebels. Indeed. Now, uh, with regards to the issue of Syria, interestingly, many say that we will see another Libya take place in Syria. Uh, I mean, because of the fact that you've been on the ground in Libya for such a long time, how do you compare the situations in both countries? Yes, well, I was also in Syria uh, in January for some weeks. And there are many similarities between the two situations. Of, of course, the greatest similarity is that the so-called opposition movement or the rebels, the insurgents on the ground in Syria, like in Libya, are also supported uh, with arms, logistical support, financial support by the NATO and uh, uh, GCC states, most, mostly Qatar and Saudi Arabia. Um, and, you know, we have seen, you know, yesterday the, the, the defeat of the rebels in Homs was declared. Uh, and uh, we have seen reports that hundreds of, of fighters from Libya, who now that they have succeeded in destroying Libya, have traveled to Syria to do um, basically the same thing there. And if you want to see, uh, you're, you're absolutely right, if you want to see what will happen in Syria if NATO gets their way with destabilizing the country, you only need to look at the, thousand, the, sorry, the hundreds of thousands of people that have had to flee Libya, the tens of thousands of people that have been killed, the tens of thousands of people that are in prison and being uh, tortured, the complete destruction of the economy, and really, you know, a, comp a, a, a complete anarchy. There is no government in Libya, and if the, if the, the trend continues or the aggression against Syria continues, it will be exactly the same in Syria, but it, it, and it will be a very explosive situation for the region. And just, uh, you know, very recently we've had Obama uh, saying uh, that he wasn't bluffing when he said that he would be prepared to attack Iran. So not only is that, you know, in a very short space of uh, time, the, 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 the destruction of one sovereign state, uh, Libya, 
the attempt at, uh, the very strong attempt at the destruction of another sovereign state, Syria, but already they're trying to roll uh, on Iran. And, you know, of course, that will be uh, uh, disastrous, not just for the Iranian people, the Syrian people and Palestine. It will be disastrous for the whole world because the situation will explode. So these are really very dangerous times that we're living through. Indeed. On that note, we'll leave you there. Many thanks to Lizzie Phelan, freelance journalist from London.